<laughs> what's good y'all making the walk podcast episode 14 um we, so we're we're gonna get this one out earlier in the week than we normally do which is great um wanted to make sure we still had those feelings that we have from ufc 291 um i think it was the best card of the of the of the year uh, in my opinion i think the only competition is probably International Fight Week with um, Yair and um, and Alex Volkanovsky, um, that whole card, you know, Drickus Duplessis, Robert Whitaker. Um, I think this one was even better than that one. Um, mm-hmm. Just in my opinion, holistically, all of the fights didn't turn out the way that I wanted them to turn out, hence my hat. But, um, but you know, we can kind of dive into it. So, I'll leave it up to you. You want to go from the, we're going to just talk about the main card, even though the prelims were really, really good too. But mm-hmm. do you want to start at the, you want to start at the the beginning of the main card or do you want to start at the top of the main card with Dustin and Justin too? Which one you want to start with? I didn't think we weren't going to cover the prelims because they were such good fights. Can we cover like, yeah, sorry. Um, like which which ones which fights? Yeah, can we cover? Um, sorry, I was getting a call. Oh. Well, we don't have to cover them, but maybe just like quickly chat about them. You know. But yeah, like, I mean, we can. I mean, the the thing is, is like one. this card has so many finishes, only two decisions. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But. Yeah, I was just, um, well, okay, I liked every single fight on this card, but I do want to talk about, um, I don't remember if Darius Flowers and uh, Thor were on the main card or not. And then, No, they're prelims, prelims. Okay, cool, and then like the Muay Thai dude um, and the lanky Askren looking guy, Roman, Roman Kapi, Oh, Kapalov. Kap- Kap- there you go. Uh, really, those yeah. are the only two on the prelims that I just want to chat about really quick, but, um, for like Darius flowers and the Thor looking guy. Um, I, I really just wondered why he wasn't, uh, just able to adjust to like any type of body shot or, um, kick that Thor was throwing. Cause clearly that was, you know, his weak spot. So mm. I'm talking through what happened there, for I, him. I, I what think... he could do in the future. So, uh, in Darius Flowers against Jake Matthews, the first thing Jake that I think Matthews. that, yeah, Jake Matthews, so his um, name is not Thor. Okay. It isn't, but he had the same hairdo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that like the problem that Darius was running into was obviously his game plan was to pressure mm-hmm. and, um, and in pressuring, he had to make sure that he, um, protected himself from any counters. So he had to have his mm-hmm. hands up. And yeah. so since his hands were up, that means his body's open. And Jake Matthews took advantage of when he wasn't advancing to be able to dig those toes in um, into his midsection. Now, oh, that obviously led to the, uh, the low blow, which mm-hmm. I think obviously we are not, you know, Darius Flowers balls, so we don't know how they felt. But... <laughs> Um, but, but at the same time, you know, from the replay, it looked like it was more the toes getting into the, into the midsection. But, um, I mean, the heel could have hit the cup and, you know, yeah. you never know. You, I mean, we're not in there. We're only judging it by the camera angles that we see. It looked like it was, you know, a perfectly legal strike, but, you know, again, I, I, I don't, I don't get the sense that Darius was faking, but, this was also his promotional debut. Um, and it wasn't a good look, for, that's for sure. But it, it didn't, I do it didn't agree. Look good. I think it was half and half, you know. And I mean, yeah, he made a choice. Okay, so um, you did you did have a good point while we were watching the fight about him being too short for the division. But yeah, um, I agree with that. I think he's too short, and I think that might have a lot to do with. Um, 
I don't know. You see fighters like Volkov, Volkov, Alexander Volkanovsky, who he's going to catch any legs coming his way if they keep hurting him. He's not going to. Mm-hmm. You think I'm going to stand here and let you kill me, John? Like, he's not going to do that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, he might be yeah. too short. I agree with that. But I, I, I would like to see more of him. He, he, he's an exciting fighter for sure. Yeah. I like the pressure that he was, was uh, marching Jake down with. Um, yeah. And if Jake wasn't a, as a, an accomplished striker, counter striker, um, mm-hmm. able to strike going backwards, that could have really paid dividends for, for Darius. But, on that, you know, I know I mentioned, you know, him being too small and rumor has it that he's actually trying to get a lightweight bout um, oh, okay, cool. in his next one. So I think he fits right That's in um, as far as being a lightweight, because um, this is my opinion, just from, you know, all of the fights that I've seen, you know, over quite some time mm-hmm. that it's not necessarily the weight that makes the difference in these weight classes that are right next to each other. I mean, that plays a part when we're talking about wrestling, but everybody got to make weight. It's more the length um, and the height, you know, that really make the difference in somewhere like a lightweight to a welterweight, because that's where um, people who are smaller lightweights, you know, smaller in the sense of height will struggle when they move up because their opponent's able to touch them and they can't, you know, return the favor. So I think that that's where Darius was running into those issues where he had to close the distance, but as he closed the distance, he was running into, into those kicks and that took away his gas tank clearly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I still think I'm glad to hear that, that he's looking for a lightweight. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, the second one was uh, Roman Kapilov. Kapilov and um, yeah. I don't know what the other guy's name is. Um, oh, Claudio Rivera. The, the, the yeah. big one. Yeah. yeah he was he's a, a big really big guy. Um, I don't think I've ever seen him fight before, but I thoroughly enjoyed that fight. And it just shows like, okay, now I really think I can go into a Muay Thai deep dive. Um, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Definitely. I think that, um, well, Roman Kapalov get... was on a, a, a knockout win streak. Um, yeah. I saw which that was interesting. Too. Yeah. Yeah. What did he, did he, I, re, I forgot this fast. Did he get a submission or he was, no, no, no. No. He did the, a, um, back, the spinning back fist, right? Was that his him? Was a head, it was a head kick. The spinning back fist was, um, the, the second uh, fight. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, Medich against, uh, Samela's burger. Joel, mm, okay, let's not go back into that name situation. That is a tough name to pronounce. Samelis Burger, that's the way I say it. Samelis I mean, Burger. Samelis. But he's got an E in there. It's S-E-M. That's why I I say Samelis Burger. But I, I just need Samelis to hear him say it. Burger. Samelis. You made it sound like it was uh, a some echo. sort of baby milk. Similac. You may sound like it was a disease. He's got that similess. I don't know. He's gonna make it. <laughs> well, like, anyhow, let's see. I mean, he he had a they. That was an amazing fight too. I thought that. I was think if be they like, gave out fight of the night, that would have been yeah, it, right? Yeah. I mean, I had that they like as immediately as it was over. I was like, well, that's fight of the night. But yeah. as the card went on, I was like, well, shit. How are they going to pick? You know, fight and performance it, of the night. It was rough. It was rough. It was rough. Mm-hmm. But Roman yeah. Kapalov, I think, has a future at middleweight for sure. Not to say that Claudio Rivera doesn't, because he was doing some good things too. Um, yeah, he really was. But Kapalov is exciting. Um, you don't know this dude, but he reminds me of Laurie uh, Markinen. He plays uh, for the Utah Jazz. Um, Kapalov actually reminds me of him. But um, but uh, I think that he definitely has a, a really dope. He also re- reminds me of. Um, like kind of the the Swedish kickboxers back in the day that really specialized in kickboxing that came mm-hmm. over to the UFC that mm-hmm. you know really showed that there is levels to the striking game that um that the UFC wasn't really instituted into yet. But he yeah. reminds me of that that type of fighter, but yeah, he's super exciting. Yeah, I really liked him. I would like to see them fight again in the future. <laughs> I want to see uh, 
Kapilov against uh, another type of striker. Um, someone that, but but actually, I take that back. Not a striker. I want to see him against a wrestler. I want to see how his takedown defense is. Um, yeah, see if sure, he's, we didn't really see how see well that. rounded, how well rounded he is. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Claudio was not trying to take him down. He's trying to counter. So, I and agree. he did actually at the end of that first round. He did catch him too. Yeah. 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 But um, was there any other ones that you want to talk to uh, talk about on the prelims? Was Tony on the prelims or was he on the main no, card? No, main card. Main card. Okay, cool. Uh, no, we can go with the main card. That's cool. Okay, so first fight of the main card was Kevin Holland against Michael Chiesa, um, which Kevin Holland won by submission. Uh, Bravo Choke, uh, a.k.a. Darce. Um, what did you think of that fight? What were your thoughts on that one? So I was going for Holland. But I didn't think he was going to win. Um, I don't know what the hell Michael Chiesa was doing. I don't know if it was the whole elevation thing for him or if he underestimated Holland's, uh, you know, standing game. I don't know what the hell he was doing. I don't think he knew what he was doing. But It was weird. It was. I was yeah. really – I was actually surprised that Kevin got a, a submission. I mean, he's got submissions, but I just didn't think that was going to happen here. So, yeah. really good fight. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be a closer fight than it was. Um, I actually expected Kevin to win, um, but I thought that uh, Kiesa would have put up more of a fight than he did. It almost seems like um, he he mm-hmm. had a game plan going into it. I'm not going to say what he had a game plan going into it, and. Uh, and Kevin did something to throw him off of his game plan and he didn't didn't necessarily have a plan B and Yeah. He ended up where he ended up. But well, the, yeah, the it just seemed like he, he was thrown off. That I heard was uh and I man, I can't remember that dude's name, but or what podcast it was. Do you remember what podcast it was? MMA where the guy was like, um, it was like if Michael Chiesa retired two years ago and didn't tell anyone about oh, it. That was gosh. hilarious. Yeah, that was. That I don't was remember who it was, but I agree, um, though. It did look a lot like that. Yeah, he. I don't even know what he does next, to be honest. Chiesa? But, uh-huh. But I, I don't think Holland should move up at all. No, that was weird. After he... Yeah. Wins in the first round in dominant mm-hmm. fashion mm-hmm. Um, in the welterweight division. Is about yeah. to grab a number as of tomorrow. 12, right? Should be 12 yeah. anyway. Should be 12, yeah. I would think. Why would he... Why would you... I mean, like... It's what he said. To, he wants the BMF belt, you know? The BMF I'm, belt is, is a lightweight belt. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's... Um, I don't understand... Why you would want to move up? Um, I, well, I take that back. I do understand why he wants to move up. He wants to be able to eat and have a looser diet restriction than to be a welterweight. I get that. I understand that. But, um, and this is really purely as a person who doesn't have to go through it because he does. But it seems like you would take the path where it's easier, um, more likely that you have a favorable matchup. Um, in the welterweight division, in the middleweight division, you are fighting monsters. They are 15 pounds heavier mm-hmm. and that's on weigh in night. There is no telling yeah. what they, what they weigh or weigh in morning that no telling what they weigh on fight night. So like, no, I don't think when he goes up there and fights these wrestlers, you know, uh, um, Derek Brunson, I mean, Derek Brunson didn't let him get up at all. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so who does he fight in this division? What would you say, Jeff? Did you fight Jeff Neal? Uh, well, Jeff has a fight coming up. So, um, who does that he fight? Is that you who said that? I might have heard well, that somewhere. Well, I thought that was it. Yeah. Nah, he's he's got a fight. Um, I'm pretty sure he does has a fight. I think he has a fight. Um, I think he. I think. Let me see. Let's see who's up here. You know who would be interesting for him? 
is someone like a Neil Magny. That would be a good fight. Yeah. Neil Magny would be a good fight. Yeah, that would be a good fight, actually. And they're actually similar build. Um, Magny's just well-versed. He's Magny has the most wins in welterweight division history. Um, that would just be a really good test for Kevin to see where he's at. He could probably get settled. that fight before the end yeah. of the year, too. Like it's settled. He's fighting Neil. I like that fight a lot. Yeah, I think that works. So what about Mac, Michael Chiesa? What do you think? Um, I thought it's established I, 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 vote, that he was I vote for retirement. Okay. <laughs> On the same page. So <laughs> yeah. Retirement. That's what I vote for. Don't come out here and get beat up by somebody who was never at your skill level. Like just go out while the getting is good, you know? Like Well shit, speaking of retiring. Oh yeah. <sighs> Bobby Green defeated Tony Ferguson via arm triangle. Um, the first arm triangle that Bobby Green has had since he got into the UFC many moons ago. Uh, he did. He did. I thought, I'm sorry, go ahead, finish your thought. Oh, no, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, Bobby Green showed another wrinkle in this game, I guess. Is that what you, another wrinkle with the submission? Is it a wrinkle? Like a, but, like uh, a nod on the post or something? Like, what do you, what do you should, just, I don't another, know. Another just tool. another way, that he, another you know, tool in the shit. bag. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Get our analogies in order today. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I thought that that was the second time I saw Tony die in the octagon. Legit. Like when he got knocked out by Chandler, I genuinely yeah. was afraid that this man soul left his body. But this time just, you know, not even tapping and just kind of like seeing his arm flop. I was like, Oh no. <laughs> It, it really freaked me out. For sure. <laughs> Death. <laughs> yes, that's. I think that's what you said too. I, I was yeah. pretty scared for him. Then again, but not as scared as it was with Chandler. That was pretty scary. Yeah, the Chandler one was really bad. God. Yeah, that but, was um, really bad. Just like the fight in general, I wasn't actually thinking about what Bobby Green, uh, what his like grappling would be like. I didn't even think he was going to try to do that in this match at all. Didn't cross my mind. Um, but I do think Tony was doing okay in round one. I'm just mm -hmm. not sure if the whole eye poke situation impacted what happened after that. Either just like from a mental standpoint or just like, oh shit, my eye is fucked up. I can't, you know. Funny you that you say that. Plan and off. That is what he's echoing on social media now is that the eye poke made a significant difference in the fight for him. And that's um, one of the major reasons that he uh, didn't come out victorious in his, so in his I'm opinion. I'm saying that as a, as a person that's watching, right? Like right. in the moment, like live, I was like, hmm. But thinking about it after and it completely impacting the rest of the fight. I mean, I guess he's supposed to say that if he wants to come back. Um, even if you want to say it, just to say it like, yeah, that should mess me up or whatever. Cool. I still don't think like he should come back. I mean, maybe like one fight. Yeah. Right. But it's like the last, last, last one. Like, that's it. What do you think? I think um, I personally don't want to see him in another fight. Um, just I just think that he's shop worn at this point, and it's just one yeah. of those situations where, like, somebody has to pull him to the side, somebody that he listens to, and pull him yeah. to the side and say, "Okay, hey man, we're we're done here. We're done. We don't want to yeah. see you get really hurt," you know. Um, you're you're leaving with um a portion of your faculties <laughs> but uh you know you're leaving you know relatively healthy like the, just let's go now seven. now's a good time yeah seven losses is a pretty good time i would say now okay like we all know right he's not losing to i'm, I'm not going to say bobby green is 
but he's not the same level fighter as someone like, you know, Justin um, right. Chandler, Benny. He's just not on that level. But at the same, like, that is a loss where I'm going to kind of tilt my head. I'm like, bruh, it's time, you know? Uh, maybe even Nate Diaz, just the way he looked in there. Not saying that Nate is not on that level either, but it's just the way he looked against Nate. That was, it wasn't yeah. good. It wasn't good. It was really sluggish. There's no like elevation, uh, you know, situation to kind of fall back on or, you know, blame yeah. or whatever. But So let me put this into perspective. The last three people that he beat, the last three people that he beat oh, are, all, are all Pettis yeah. and Kevin Lee. Yeah. Yes. None of them in the UFC anymore. Two of them have officially retired and one is we all think he's retired, which is Anthony Pettis. He's not retired? Okay, well, there you go. Not technically. Not technically, no. Okay. I mean, he's not in the UFC anymore, obviously, but um, technically he's not retired. It's just so but crazy Kevin on Lee the flip is. side. 11, 12. So he's like a a 12 win uh, streak, you know, like Right before yeah. his loss to, you know, Gaethje. So <clears throat> it, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, Gaethje changed him. Um, that that fight definitely changed him for sure. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Pretty I want to. I want to see him. You know, right off into the sunset. That's why I, I, I think that would, all of us would be um, happy if he did that. Yeah, uh, we we'd applaud. One him. of the you know, the, what'd you say? Like a sunset send off. Yeah, but um. I, really quick question before we hop off of him. Did you think like that eye poke was intentional? No, no. I didn't think it was intentional. I think um, it was a smidgen of intention. You know no, I, mean? I don't think so. I mean, like mm-hmm. people say a lot of things about Bobby Green, but I think that, you know, he's his personality is um, eccentric, but I don't think that he's a dirty fighter. Um, I I think that if he was, then that would have shown up a lot a, a long time ago with his fights, and he's mm-hmm. been. I mean, you saw how many fights he had, you know, forty plus fights. Like, mm-hmm. dude's a, he's a professional. Um, hey. so I, I don't, I don't think it was dirty. Circumstances don't determine the character. You know what I'm saying? That was that's true, you know, but I don't. Think, it, it just didn't look as heated to me mm-hmm. uh, yeah. of a of a rivalry, and I think that we all expected Bobby to win that fight. It was just a matter of how good was know, Tony man. gonna look. Bobby did come through with the ski mask, standing like Michael Myers outside of, you know, before Tony got out of his car, just kind of standing there. Was it on Embedded or something? No, yeah, I saw it. It was, you know, he was upset and he was talking to him uh, during uh, Ground and Pound, too, you know, because he always talks, though. That's true. He was was talking to Islam when he was getting beat up. So, okay. Well, I don't know. It did seem, I'm not sure if that was just character wise, you know. (sighs) <sighs> yeah. trying to yeah, you know, a... fluff the fight up because Tony said something like he saw fear yeah. in his eyes or some shit like that. But no, no I, I, I am, I'm, I'm sure. anxious to see There's who Bobby like... went. I was just going to say, I was anxious to see, I'm anxious to see who Bobby matches up against. That's, that would be interesting to me. I don't even, do you know where he's ranked? He's not. At all? No. Oh. No, he's not right. But okay, well then I would have no idea where he'd go next. I, I'm just interested to see if they match him up with somebody that's um, another fringe contender, you know, mm-hmm. um, somebody that's just right outside the rankings, or if they match him up against like a young up and comer, you know, like a, a lightweight that's trying to break into the rankings. Because beating Bobby Green, that's that actually is uh, it's an accomplishment that's, for sure. Yeah. I would agree. I, I think I'd like to see him against a young, you know, up and comer. That would be a cool yeah, fight. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. That he's got enough cool. energy, I think. Yeah, I think he's got some some tread on the tire for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking of people who have tread on the tire still that people were trying to write off, <gasps> oh. Derek Lewis, uh, pretty much demolished uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima. That is legit. Um, Nobody saw that coming. Okay, so no, I didn't see that coming either. But 
I've seen him throw, you know, athletic things before, like a, a jumping kick or a roundhouse. I've, I've seen him do it, but I just I didn't think he was going to, you know, go Jorge Masvidal and come out with a, a flying knee out the gate and Dude, it landed. I follow Jorge. I am running out the fucking building. Like oh, yeah. that is so insane. That was so crazy. Yeah, that was that was wild. Oh that my goodness! Wild. Like that was wild. So I I what I couldn't understand is I think they asked him, you know, did you plan for that? And he said, no, I just threw some bullshit out there, see if it stuck. But then I yeah. I feel like post fight is he said it's something that they practice. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't sure if that's what he was talking about, you know, like the flying knee. But what did you get from that? Um, I don't think that they practiced the flying knee per se. Like, oh, that's mm-hmm. going to be open. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like with, with Jorge, they practiced it because they practiced it because of tendencies. They know that Ben Askren's instinct when he sees trouble is to go for a takedown. And what you got to do to do a takedown is put your head down. Well, I don't think that they drilled it in that manner. Did he practice, you know, athletic plyometric explosive movements? I'm sure he did. You don't walk in with a six pack, you know, and not do, you know, plyometrics, but. That's, that's um, exactly why I said, that's probably why he has a six pack. He practicing the flying knee. Well, according to him, he got off the sodas, you know what I'm saying? He got off the sodas. He got yeah. off of them. So I, I don't can know. see that too. Totally possible. Yeah, that's sugar. But yeah. I, I, I don't think that they practice that per se, but like I think that he's always good for one explosive movement. But he he's a mm-hmm. he's a really, really good athlete. People really yeah. sleep on how good of an athlete Derek Lewis is. Yeah. I think that one had a little bit of a late stoppage. I was wondering what uh barbecue man was doing. What's his name again? Dan Oh, Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. Man, yeah, um, he always look every time they show the the picture on him, like it's like I mean, he, he just finished the conversation. It's so hilarious. He was like, Yeah, like, yeah, I told him. I told him. Oh, I didn't even see you there. Okay, hey. We're about to have this fight. Like, I mean, he comes like out of nowhere with that. Every time. Every time. But I, but I thought it was a little bit of a late stoppage. I mean, flying knee landed and he went directly into, you know, I mean, he's clearly hurt, grounded pound. He was covered up. Why do you think mm-hmm. it took him a little bit to I think that, that he was, because he was defending himself. Right. But. Was he? Okay, I have to I mean, he had his hands up. He, was, he had his hands up. You know, he's he trying. he didn't have his hands up, so. Okay. He did. He had his hands up, but, um, and he was shelled up, but, like, he, they tend to give them a little bit of time to get their wits about them, you know, give them a few seconds to give them, you know, see, are, are you going to try to get out of that position? Or are you going to stay shelled up right here? Because if you stay shelled up, then I got to stop the fight because obviously you're not protecting yourself anymore. Um, so he gave him a little time to recover. Um, but De Lima was like, nah, man, that's it for me. So, yeah, you know, that. I think it was appropriate um, that he gave him a little bit of time. Um, but if he would have stopped it immediately, I wouldn't have been mad because that's a big dude with a big knee. It hit you right in your face. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I guess I didn't get my uh, my bingo square from Derek, which I'm still okay with. And yeah. I was going for him regardless of what I thought was going to happen. So I was really happy about it. I Thoroughly enjoyed his post fight, um, yeah, octagon interview. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, That's he's like unmatched. There's n- no one can have a better post fight. Is there anybody in the UFC anybody that is more likable than Derek Lewis? The only person men I can or think women, of... like who could it possibly be? I thought I answered it. Now I can't remember my response. I thought maybe I said Brandon Moreno, but you did bring up like, Brandon Moreno. Obviously, Wonder Boy, but Wonder Boy is just like super nice, and so yeah. is Brandon Moreno. That doesn't mean they're extremely likable. Like even during the weigh-ins, um, he had the whoever does the actual like scale. 
the guy standing mm-hmm. in front of it and does the shit. Like, even he was laughing at him. Like, it's kind of yeah. hard not to like him. Yeah. You know? I think that I think that if we're talking about the all likable team, I think yeah. that Brandon Moreno and Wonder Boy make it. But I think that Derek Lewis is the MVP. He's mm-hmm. like he's the most likable person in the UFC. Hands down, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But so with that, who do you think that he should fight after this? You gotta win. He's number ten. Where does he go from here? I don't know. Because the, the problem rankings. with it, he's fought so many people in the rankings. So, like right now, it shows him at eleven, mm-hmm. but um, he'll be ten, I think. Maybe we'll see. But he was ten going into it. Um, let's see. Let's see what they show him at. Let me refresh. Did they show him at 11 for you? Yeah, I see 11. I thought they yeah. updated Tuesday, so. Yeah, they update tomorrow, so. Um, Dude, I don't even so... know. Like, he's fought a lot of people up here, like you said. Then they're going into, like, you know. Um, He's fought, every, he he's fought everybody from eight up. All of them. Every he fought, single so he... person. Oh, from eight up. Okay, so. Honestly, I could see them trying to make him fight Almeida because he hasn't fought I him yet. I pray to God they do I not make that fight. Not that is not a good fight for him. <laughs> and if no. the UFC, especially if they renew his contract, I don't think they want to do that. Um, I think a lot of people would like. Oh well, Ty Ty Tuivasa already has a fight, so well, shit, they're not going to give him Aspinall, especially Aspinall coming off of that win. Yeah, yeah, Aspinall just won, uh, so no reason to fight. I don't know what he does. It might be too close for, like, uh, for Siri. That might be too close. Mm-hmm. I could see him fighting uh, uh, Tabora, maybe. Maybe. That's about it. Um, Tabora. Yeah, Marcin Tabora. He's the one that fought Aspinall. Uh, oh, I Aspinal. skipped right over him. Yeah, I skipped right over him. I could see that. That's, I, that's somebody yeah. he hasn't fought. I mean, that's true. That that's good for that would be good for Tabora. He'll take the fight. He would take the fight. It would be. I think it's just a good way to get Derek back on track to, you know, to see how committed he is to making another run before they start to do these rematches. Because any anything yeah. above that is going to be a rematch. So exactly, that's true. I think you nailed it. Bora and yeah he did say he wanted to do another run for the belt and then honestly with John most likely retiring after this fight and then also Miocic like mm-hmm. I'm sure he's gonna retire too yeah it's about to be wide open up there yeah then you got like Siri um Curtis Blades but really oh hey Siri stop <laughs> goodness yeah um I, his biggest problem besides you know grappling just in general like fighters that grapple more or wrestle more uh is gonna be tom aspinall that's gonna be his biggest problem in his run tom, for the tom, belt tom is a problem for everybody but yeah yeah but yeah, i'm happy true. i'm happy he's back in but if he does decide to retire I hope he does go to uh, Bare Knuckle. I'm still on that. That'd be dope. That would be, that would be dope. Hey, who's tied to Avasa fighting next? Do you know? I, I don't. I didn't think that he had a fight. I thought he had a fight. I don't, I don't think so. And you know what? This is why we need like uh, a uh, a producer because they can look this stuff up while we're talking about stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we're accepting applications. For sure. Um, nah, I don't see a fight that he has lined up. Um, he's coming off of uh, two consecutive losses. But the problem with that is, is he's lost to the number one and the number two contenders in the division. So it's not like he's losing against, you know, trash people. So uh, mm. it's, it's it's interesting at, at the top of the heavyweight division for sure. Mm. Very interesting. They might 
can make that then. Like, you know, Derek and Ty, two of us said. Derek and Ty, you know, two. two. Derek and Ty, two. Yeah. Because that was Maybe. A, a badass fight. and It really was. You know. I anyway. think any fight that's gonna that has either one of them is gonna be exciting from here on out, like because yeah. because t- actually Tatu Avaza makes that all likable team too. Everybody likes Tatu Avaza. There it is. Okay, and I had forgotten about him. So yeah, who's not? He's just as likable as Derek Lewis. I just think Derek has been there longer. So maybe maybe I think you know, Ty maybe will get there one day. I think so. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I think so. We'll but see. um we'll see what it does. So okay. Co main event. Yeah. Kajeda and uh Jan Blokovic. Blokovic? Blokovic. I said it the same, <laughs> but I just sounded longer. Yep. Yeah, Blahovic. Blahovic. Well, you go first. What do you think? Um I think that it was the fight that I expected to see. I expected Jan to go for a lot of takedowns. Um, you know, he said in the lead up that he was going to test his Polish power, but I know that he wasn't going to do that. Why would you fight somebody in an area that that person is strong in unless you're just trying to prove a point? Mm-hmm. No reason to do that. You're trying to get the win. So he he took him down, and I thought that he he did a pretty good job of it in, in round one, but yeah. I, he is the only person that I saw that maybe the elevation – affected maybe or it could just be he got tired because if you're not a traditional wrestler um and you're doing those particular movements um throughout the course of a of a fight you get tired faster it's just strikers can strike all day long wrestlers can wrestle all day long but when you ask one to do the other they get tired faster so i think that that yeah. played a, a part in it not to mention alex just has really good takedown defense um no. And he's bigger and he's stronger and he's heavier. Just what you said in the last one. Um, those things did take effect. Yeah. And it was really hard to do to to get him down. But what did uh-huh. you think about Alex at light heavyweight? Um, well, I mean, it was, it, was, it was beautiful. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, But he was actually the one I thought was affected by the elevation, to be honest. Um, I... I saw a lot of the whole, he just got knocked out, circling around. I think that probably played a part too. But I also thought um, he was reluctant uh, when he had Jan against the cage, which is what, like, signature for him, right? But mm-hmm. um, he was, I think he was scared of the, the what's the word I'm thinking of? I'm losing it. With the counter? The counter, um, mm-hmm. you know, coming off of that. Uh, knockout from Izzy. So I'm not sure if it was a knockout like um, from a physical perspective, but more like mental and his kind of lowering his confidence there. Or not yeah. lowering his confidence, but just him being more cautious. Cautious. Um, yeah. I think I think his confidence was there, but yeah, I, I agree. Just yeah. a little bit more cautious when he got into those exchanges. I was kind of irritated by Jan. I don't know why he did that. You know, just trying to take him down. No, I I do know why he did that, but I was hoping that he had a different game plan. You know, um, once you actually felt how heavy, you know, Alex was, um, he you, he completely cast out. Like you know, I think maybe he had him in the rear neck choke quite a few times, but he wasn't able to execute it. So then, okay pivot was next and that kind of wasn't there so i don't even know what's next for young to be honest like i think you should just chill for a second chill. Yeah, yeah um i think that for Jan, uh well one you know of course i wrote a a piece that's up on mma sucker um about the light heavyweight division that I'd put in the in the comments, but mm-hmm. um, I think that Jan is just at a crossroads, similar to you know somebody that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, I think he's at a crossroads where his age and his uh, opportunities and his goals have to really be reassessed. I think that all of those things need to line up when you're making a decision on your fights and on your and not just the next fight, but the next few fights. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, he he lost in what could be considered a number one contender match. Um, so that puts him yeah. kind of back at the back of the queue, considering the draw they had before that. Um, so does he want to fight back up? Which in reality, I think that he's probably still only one to two fights away from getting back in it, uh, just because of the pre existing history that he had with Yuri. Um, in the event that Yuri wins the belt, you know, it, it, like there's some storylines that can get him back there, but does he want to do that? Does he want to do all those things? Um, because mm-hmm. it, it is a lot of um, conditionals to get him back to to fighting for the belt. So he's at a crossroads. He really yeah. is. Yeah. So I, I don't know um, if, if, if I'm picking a fight for him, um, it would probably be somebody like I probably pull that Rockage card. You know, when he fought Rockage, Rockage uh, hurt his knee, so yeah. you know they're they're due for for uh, a rematch there. But it, but in reality, if I'm him, I, I might walk away or at least put myself on the shelf for the, for a little while, um, hang out with his new baby and all that stuff. Yeah, I I, I would. I, I would just show for a bit, because even yeah. Rockage and um, uh, was it Nikita Krylov? I think yeah. those are those are difficult fights. Um, I wouldn't even want to fight Johnny Walker if I were him, to be honest. You know what's interesting is Johnny Walker just got a fight. Uh, it was just announced today. The person that I said he should fight in the uh, article is no uh, way. yeah Magomed uh, Ankalaev against Johnny Walker. Holy shit, that is really high. How did he even pull that one off? It's not really high. Um, uh, Johnny Walker's six, and Magomed is, is two. Yeah, that's close enough. I mean, if you think about who's already got fights and who just fought, like, okay, well, it, I guess kind of so. run out of people to to pick. And Ankalaev, of this is a perfect matchup for him. That's true. Somebody who who's going to allow him to be the counter striker. That's true. Because Johnny is so confident in his striking. So this could be really exciting, which is really different for the light heavyweights right now. Um Wait. since So does that mean well, well I guess we'll see tomorrow if Pajeda is number three now. Yeah, we'll see. I mean based on what they normally do, yeah, you slide I mean, right on into three. I mean they're kinda of throwing Johnny in the mix now. Like yeah. that would make him very close to being a contender depending on if, you know, Prahashka comes back or not, which it sounds like he is. Um, the Abu Dhabi card, I think, is what I heard. For the, nah, it couldn't be. Well, pretty maybe, sure actually, maybe. Maybe, it could I'm be. I'm pretty could sure be. it's, in fact, I think it was, what did it say, Jamal Hill? Jamal Hill said that? I think so. Yeah, I think he um, did like a post fight uh, for two ninety one. So mm-hmm. don't know. Oh yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched that. Yeah. I, I, he, I'm sure he's in the know. Yeah, I'm well, sure he knows. I mean, he would have, you know. So we'll see. Um, that would be cool. I, I just, I really wish like for Pajeda. I, I think Yuri's a good, good matchup for him. But I just, preference wise, I would have liked to see him fight Jamal Hill. Um, I think that'd be less you know, take down threat there and mm-hmm. they can actually just stand up, which would give Jamal a good yeah, opponent. A better, better, better you know? area for him. Yeah. For both of them, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantasy yeah. matchup right there. Hopefully we I get it. I love Jamal. I love Jamal. I love him. But I'm, I'm going down with some that, you know. <laughs> God, I'm sorry, sorry. A lot of that probably has to do with how much uh, I like Gilbert to share up too. So. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, but I was really impressed, by the way, with Alex's uh, takedown defense, too. He almost got a, in a standing. Uh, what was it? A standing guillotine, I think he had. Jan oh, in the round one? Uh huh. And Jan just made like a slight little twist and, and and he was out of the danger zone. But I yeah. was kind of. I was like, oh my God, you know. But that would have been yeah. crazy. Yeah, it really would have been. But. I also mm-hmm. actually, I also thought live that Jan won round three 
because I felt he had um, just more volume, you know, striking wise. But I don't. I went back and I looked at the um, at the stats, and uh, even though he did have more volume, it just he wasn't landing enough significant strikes. And I think he he landed less uh, strikes than Alex. Mm -hmm. his like total strikes in that round so yeah yeah and then like the whole last minute takedown thing he didn't do anything with it you know yeah. i'm not mad about it but live i was thinking like oh i i think Jan won that round but <laughs> you know yeah, it was good i, I felt they... bad for Jan, though um i didn't Just necessarily kind of feel him. bad I mean, depleted. it does suck when you yeah. when when there's fighters that you like and they lose. But like, mm -hmm. I didn't feel bad. He definitely looked tired um, mm -hmm. and That's sluggish. That's what I felt bad for. I was like, oh boy. And I was like, man, you you ain't got the energy, bro. It's it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone. You got to survive. Don't get knocked out. But um, yeah, just live. I, I had a feel because it was one one in my opinion. I think for everybody, it was one one going into the last round. Mm -hmm. And for sure. Jan just he just didn't do enough to take yeah. it away from Alex on that one. Um yeah. so split decision yeah. was right. I think so too. Um yeah. So speaking of decisions that didn't need to be made, uh Justin Gaethje uh head kicked Dustin Poirier um out of Salt Lake City. What do you even say about that other than like fuck? Like wow. It made yeah. his homeboy put the belt on him. He didn't even look at him. <laughs> didn't, just, even, you know, didn't even acknowledge him. Mm -mm. Jorge didn't even know. Jorge came in with T Rex hands. He didn't know what to do. Like, should I put it? Yeah, he was like, do I put it around your shoulder? Put it your head. What, like, what do I do with it? But, woo, did not expect that. Yeah. I think. But the, you know, like that's those just, matches that. You're so shocked and you hold your breath and you I couldn't breathe for a couple seconds. I just was that shocked that it happened. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, but, it's just like those those fights that just get your, your heart rate going all crazy and you're just living and dying with every moment, every punch that's thrown, every kick that's thrown, like you are just on the edge of your seat and it was like that. Um Honestly, it either was a, I, either outcome was going to be bad in my opinion yeah. for me, um, yeah, I because I like both of them. A lot of people, yeah, yeah, because it just, it just I, like, I like both it, of them so much. Yeah, and it just felt like a continuance of their first fight. It was a lot it of did. the exact same thing, and just it did. Both of them were they just seemed more polished. Honestly, um, yeah, it was a little. Uh, I don't know. It was just pretty crazy. The you know side by side that they did of Leon Edwards head kick and then what's his name Gaethje's head kick. Yeah. Later on, I saw same fake the right hand come come over with the kick. Mm -hmm. um, did you see except the one it was the other Wonder way? Boy? Uh huh. Yeah. Did you see the one yeah. in Wonder Boy? Exactly. No, thing. I didn't see though. It's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I'll have to send yeah. it to you so you can post it too because it, it's exactly the same. Um, yeah. And maybe we want to do a deep dive to see how many other people got uh, caught with that same technique at Salt Lake City. Hey, I know, right? Super like random sidebar. Did you update like to the iOS beta? Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I did. Okay. Yeah. I I just got a call and there's like someone's leaving a voicemail, so it's like a live transcript of the voicemail. So that's. I was like, what is this? And I got distracted. I don't think mine does I don't think mine does all the features or something. I don't know. I did. I got it. Oh, okay. It's weird, but whatever. But um Yeah, so I got a call in like at four o'clock, by the way. So I might have to Oh, run. so you in in one minute? Yeah. I might have to do <laughs> do the wrap up alone, but I just wanted to tell you that. Well, is there anything you wanted to say before you jump off about that fight? Um, no, other than I thought that Justin was, you know, working on his wrestling with Kamaru, but I think Kamaru was teaching him, you know, how he got knocked out. 
and, and <laughs> it's like you said, you know, wrestling that really isn't in his, not wrestling. Submissions aren't really in Justin's, you know, arsenal, but those head kicks are. So yes, they are. That I didn't think that was going to happen. So that was probably the best surprise of, you know, of the night, honestly. Yeah. Other than that, I think. Does that make Justin number one contender or no? No. He's still going to fight, make him... uh, you know, the winner of Charles and Islam. Yeah. But, so I mean, he's him... the number one. He is the number one contender. Yeah. Um, in Out a sense. Two. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So he's next. Yeah. Uh, I think he can. I think he can get there. I think he can get there, but I've got to run. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I thought Justin was going to take it. So I think also Dustin can chill now, but I'll let yeah. you finish talking about that. Cool. Okay. All right. So piggybacking off of what she said, um, I think that Dustin is in a unique uh, situation in the sense of he doesn't have to do anything. Um, he's, um, in a, in a great financial place. He has a lot of different businesses that are going a lot of different things away from the UFC that work in his favor. Um, he's done a ton. He's a legend. Even Justin Gaethje said that Dustin Poirier was his favorite fighter. Um, he's respected. Um, I think he's a hall of famer. Um, there's nothing that he has to do, but if he wanted to, uh, continue to fight, uh, sure, he could fight one more fight in the division and and be right back in the mix for title contention. But I think that um, that's not something that he really wants to do based on his uh, post-fight press conference. He doesn't necessarily want to fight the up-and-comers. Um, I think he's closer to make a decision to either walk away or put things on hold. But But there's some unique fights that are out there for him that are huge money fights. Um, if he wants to come back and do those or stick around and do those or do those now, he can't. Um, so you got, um, if Nate, uh, does come back to the UFC, like he says, um, the Nate Dustin fight is still there. Um, they were supposed to fight previously and didn't, uh, weren't able to for, um, I can't remember the reason why, but, uh, they weren't able to, to actually make that fight. Um, so that fight is there. The other one is, Kobe Covington, that fight is still there. That heat is still there, and that fight would do amazing numbers for both of them. Um, so that fight is an option for him as well. And I mean, if he wants to fight back in the division, like I said, he there's nothing stopping him there. Um, the UFC would definitely offer him fights there. He definitely can, you know, make a run. It's not something that he can't do just because he got the the head kick knockout, but. Um, it's just a matter of desire. Does he want to do that at this age? Uh, not that he's old, but, you know, you might want to jump out while, the, you know, like I said earlier, when, while the getting is good, um, before things start to erode. It's just a matter of, of where his head is at and what's he, what he wants to do. But I do expect Dustin Poirier to do something that makes a lot of money going forward. That's for sure. Um, so with that, UFC 291 was amazing. Only two de- decisions on the entire card. Um, just an amazing night for all involved. Um, as for us, we'll have some more content coming out later in the week, but we wanted to talk about this one while it was still fresh. So until the next video, we will highlight y'all.